from Tokyo my dear dear friends this is Daisuke and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very very good spirits wherever you are in the world and today if you don't mind I would very much like to continue on with our journey our exploration our discussion through the films that can be found and contained within this really remarkable set which is known as pioneers of African American cinema this happens to be the Blu-ray set, which was released by Kino Classics, excuse me, a few years back. And it's a really great set. And on disc three is a work that, if you don't mind, I'd like to focus our attention on today. And it's described as being from circa 1930, from the filmmakers James and Elois Gist. The name of the film is Hellbound Train. If we were to try to describe the essence of what this film is about, Hellbound Train, I think we can go towards the main metaphor or conceit that is employed by the filmmakers James and Alois Gist for purposes of this work, namely the moving train, moving along the tracks towards the destination which, according to the title, we know is a train bound for hell. And it is guided along by these uh, hellish sort of movements, if you will. And to be more specific with the metaphor, we understand that the work takes us, the viewer, through each of the train carriages that is part of this moving train. Each train car or train carriage embodies or exemplifies or captures or encapsulates or otherwise represents a particular sin or immoral act, quote unquote, immoral act uh, of the age, the age being the jazz age of the late 1920s and around the start of the 1930s. And these are sins or immoral acts from the viewpoint of the filmmakers James and Alois Gist. So we have, for example, uh, sins that are depicted that are, for example, gambling or drinking or even dancing to music of the jazz age and things of that nature. Plus, we have a film that can be described from one perspective to be perhaps filmed from a somewhat low budget perspective. It seems to be uh, something that used or seems to use somewhat handheld shots. Maybe there is a bit of a rough quality in terms of the production value, shall we say, again, from a certain perspective. And also going back to the description of the story, namely the cataloging or travel logging, if you will, through each of these carriages, again, from a metaphorical perspective, but also using the metaphor as a window into a type of sermon-like moralizing discussion uh, or, or examination of each of these sins. Again, these are things that you should not do. That's the type of messaging that is accompanying each of these uh, explorations of the train cars. So there is a sense of the sermon or the moralization or moralizing message that accompanies the sermon type of feeling or atmosphere of this particular work, which might be, again, from a certain point of view, looked upon, especially from the viewpoint of today, uh, in the year right now being 2021, maybe from that perspective, it might seem a little bit antiquated or dated. So we have these two levels of what might be seen to be somewhat uh, dated aspects of this particular film, again, from a certain point of view. However, I would suggest that with each of these levels or aspects of these films, namely the production value and also the content of the so-called sermon-like atmosphere of the film, I think we are still getting a very insightful and uh, quite uh, enlightening 
view into this time and also uh, the perspective of these filmmakers and also a type of aspect or discussion which Jacqueline Ninjuma Stewart in the, one of the supplements to the disc perhaps disca uh, discusses and describes as being one very important and major aspect of the cinema of this particular time that is trying to express or capture or otherwise describe one aspect of the religious experience or the religious uh, uh, environment that was part of this community. And so uh, in those ways, I think, and uh, also uh, uh, I should add that that type of expression that we find from James and Eloise Gist when we're talking about the production values, it also could be said to be a type of homemade feel to it, which also suggests a real strong sense of earnestness and closeness with the particular work itself. Also, there is a type of visual imagery flair that could be said to be very uh, wonderfully theatrical and thus wonderfully surreal and very inventive and bold given the types of materials and resources that were available and such. In those ways, I think it becomes a very fascinating example of this type of work or what it could represent as a discussion point, uh, various points, in fact. And so that is this work from James and Alois Gist, Hellbound Train. I think we should also remember too uh, in that discussion that, again, according to the materials found with this set, including the essay and the, uh, the booklet, we know that James and Alois Gist were evangelists who had their own sort of traveling ministry. And so they used, as part of their sermons, they used the medium of cinema. Specifically, they made their films, James and Alois Gist, and sometimes a film might have been driven more by one person rather than the other, and we will actually see other films in the set that are also by James and Alois Gist, but we understand that perhaps some of them, or some aspects might have been driven more by, say, Alois Gist than James Gist, and then vice versa, of course. Uh, in either respect, we have this couple James and Alois Gist, who were themselves delivering these sermons, uh, again, in this traveling ministry setting. And part of their sermons was the showing or exhibiting of the works that they themselves made. And so we can look at this film, Hellbound Train, as being part of that sermon experience, part of that message, moralizing message experience that they wanted to portray. And so going back to one of the perhaps so-called criticisms of this work, namely the maybe out, seemingly outdated sense, shall we say, of the messaging that's part of this film, if we recall or remind ourselves that this is part of that sermon experience that we understand was delivered by James and Alois Gist, then I think we can realize that this film can be viewed from another perspective, namely as a type of historical document or window into history as being a real almost interactive example of of one aspect of the religious experience or one example of the religious experience, again, as embodied or expressed or viewed by or from the perspective of James and Alois Gist. So in that way, I think it becomes a fascinating historical window. Uh, again, part of the, the interactive, interactive, interactive experience, excuse me, of the sermon writ large. So at least as provided by the Gists. So that's one element where I think we can look at uh, uh, that aspect from a, a different perspective and, and I think potentially see a lot of potential discussion points. And as for the filmmaking aspect themselves, as I suggested, there is this sense of either one can look at it as being re very low budget, very rough around the edges, or one can look at it as being a type of, of real sincere, earnest attempt from the heart of a type of almost uh, a really independent uh, filmmaking spirit or filmmaking will 
that is embodied by these particular works, including Hellbound Train, there is a real earnestness in the message that these uh, that the Gists were trying to portray, and you can tell also that there is this uh, this drive that is uh, pushing the film forward, uh, and again, it is I think uh, embodied in a very easy to digest manner because the metaphor I think is a very effective and clearly presented one uh, a train moving towards a, a destination and it looks like the people who are riding the train don't seem to realize the type of danger perhaps they are in until it is too late and this is the type of of or one of the types of ways in which I think a, a sermon could be delivered in terms of a, a type of uh, uh, messaging uh, to the people attending the sermon. And so we're getting this real, I would su suggest, an earnest, sincere, uh, good faith filmmaking effort by these filmmakers to tell the stories that, in that they want to tell. In that way, it, I think, embodies a really uh, lovely and a vivid example of the uh, the strength of the will of the independent nature of the filmmaking drive of these two artists, James and Alois Gist. In those ways, I think the work *A Hellbound Train* from James and Alois Gist, I think, uh, can serve to be a, a a great example of this uh, this independent spirit. Uh, filmmaking drive that is also, I think, historically significant in terms of depictions of, say, uh, daily lives or daily living, and religion, of course, being a real important part of that. Now, right, we can, of course, as viewers, from a subjective viewpoint, of course, we can, uh, we can take to or perhaps we can be critical of either the messages themselves or the filmmaking aspects. That's totally fair game. That's fair with this film, and of course that's fair with any other film uh, in the set and elsewhere. Uh, of course it is, right? But uh, if we can try also to look at it from various perspectives, again using, say, the booklet or the other materials that can be found uh, as part of the supplements or the, or the resources uh, included in the set, I should also point out that one of those resources is the uh, the uh, uh, the supplement given by Jacqueline and Juma Stewart and also Charles Musser about uh, religion as depicted in the films included in the Pioneers of African American Cinema, and also the talk given by S. Toriano Berry about James and Alois Gist and his work in terms of restoration of these works. Uh, it these tools or these resources are very enriching and very enlightening and they can serve I think to further enhance a perspective on Hellbound Train and the other works by James and Alois Gist again as a window into history as an example of the the wonderfully earnest independent filmmaking spirit of these artists and also as another example of that which is great and creative and personal and sincere and earnest about the films contained within this set, Pioneers of African American Cinema. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers.